Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Boundary Systems Webinar Wednesday. My name is Sevi Beaver and I will be hosting today's webinar where I'll be talking about sheet metal design in Creo. Uh, looks like people are still joining in, so I'm going to give everybody just uh, two or three more minutes um, and I'll get started around 11.35. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, once again, welcome everybody uh, to this week's edition of Boundary Systems Webinar Wednesday. This week, I'll be talking about sheet metal design in Creo. Um, so before we get started, just a couple introductory uh, slides. First, uh, this is gonna be our agenda for today. Um, we're gonna talk about and review Creo sheet metal design. Um, to do that, I'm going to start out with just a brief introduction to myself and Boundary Systems. I'll then jump into sheet metal design, and I will do a, a brief introduction on sheet metaling. Uh, so, what sheet metaling Creo actually is, um, you know, how it's uh, going to be used, what it's used for, and uh, some basics on how to use it. Um, I'm then going to talk about what's new in sheet metal in Creo 7 and 8, because we do have some uh, kind of interesting features that have been added in just the last year and a half. So I'm going to cover those. Uh, and lastly, I'm going to do a brief demonstration. Uh, now, before I start, um, just kind of, uh, I, I just want to talk about sheet metal um, really really briefly, I guess, because there's a big range of experience levels. Um, there are some people that work pretty much exclusively in sheet metal uh, and other people that use sheet metal, you know, just every so often. Um, this webinar is going to be a bit of an introduction. So it's going to be aimed mostly at people that, uh, you know, don't use sheet metal as often, but are looking to start using it. Um, I do want to mention that Boundary Systems does have a class coming up uh, that is a two-day sheet metal design in Creo class. So if these things are interesting and you'd like to learn more, um, I would recommend looking into that. 
Um, and if you already use sheet metal every day, you probably won't learn too much here, um, but you may uh, still find it interesting what's new in Creo 7 and 8. And um, you still may find the class useful as well if you'd like to refresh your skills. Um, again, that's, that's uh, I think, December 30th and 31st, or, or I'm sorry, November, um, in about you know, a week and a half or two weeks. And it's going to be taught by my colleague, Bill. All right, uh, so brief introduction to myself and, and Boundary. Um, my name is Sevi. I've been at Boundary for a bit over three years now. Um, and I've been working in the CAD world for about seven years before Creo. Um, again, about three years ago, um, I worked with SolidWorks and AutoCAD. And uh, Boundary Systems, my company, we are uh, pretty much an everything PTC partner. So we offer licensing, consulting, data management, training, and uh, simulation services. Uh, we're headquartered in Cleveland. On the right is some of the companies that we work with. Um, we've gotten some industry awards. The important one here is just uh, PTC Platinum Partner and Authorized Training Partner. So um, we offer lots of PTC stuff, uh, including well, lots of training classes. And additionally, besides PTC products, uh, we do have some other companies, some other software that we find offers um, a niche not covered by PTC that we think is useful to offer our customers. So some of those on our screen here include Moldex 3D, uh, Keyshot, et cetera. Okay, so uh, with introductions aside, I'm going to move on to sheet metal. Um, so what is it and why do we use it? Well, the reason sheet metaling in Creo exists is because sheet metal exists in the real world and it's going to be used very often uh, you know, in manufacturing. Very often people are going to get their bulk material in the form of sheet metal. So uh, essentially it's going to be mostly constant thickness uh, of a uh, you know, one material coming in sheets and our manufacturing is going to be uh, you know, dependent on on that material. So uh, sometimes we may do bends, we may bend this material. Sometimes we may do cuts. Sometimes we may do punches. Um, but we're always going to be working with this uh, this this sheet metal base. So in Creo, we have an entirely separate mode for sheet metal that takes these kinds of assumptions into play. Um, the question I uh, get most often is why does sheet metal in Creo have to exist? Um, I could just create something that's uh, you know made of metal and uh, formed in this way in my normal Creo parametric interface. And uh, the answer is yes, of course you could, but sheet metal is just going to make it so much easier because of all of these assumptions that we're making, like uh, mostly constant thickness, um, and just the fact that all these operations like bending and punching that we're going to do in the real world are built into this Creo sheet metal for us. So um, the ans answer to what sheet metal is in Creo is it's a uh, separate environment that helps us deal with this specific real world example of manufacturing and building with sheet metal. Um, so how is Creo going to do this? Uh, well, it's going to use developed length calculations uh, based on formulas uh, along with its preloaded materials. Um, and it's going to use that to create accurate examples of how formed or bent parts uh, would look. So um, if you take something and, uh, and bend it, we can imagine that the outer radius of this, this uh, bend, so if we imagine the bend kind of like a, a rounded edge, 
we can imagine the outer radius. Um, our length is actually going to change of our of our entire sheet when we bend this. Um, so essentially, Creo does this in a way that it'll it'll act in the real world. It, it models this properly, so we can implement our bends and we can be confident that these length changes in our part that will exist in the real world will be will be modeled in Creo. Um, so why use it? Uh, why use sheet metal? Besides the uh, things that I've already mentioned, just makes your life a lot easier if you are working in sheet metal. Um, we do have a couple uh, kind of specific benefits. The first is going to be flat pattern preview. Uh, after you've completed modeling your, your entire sheet metal part, um, so after you add all your bends, uh, all your punches, et cetera, we can actually go back to the flat pattern and we can see what this uh, completed model would look like if we bend all of these bends back to flat, essentially. Uh, the reason this is useful is we can basically design our entire part and then uh, look at this flat pattern. And we can know the exact size of sheet metal that we need right off the bat to actually make this, this final product. Sometimes this sheet metal, you know, depending on how complex your bends are, the initial flat pattern will uh, be really complex and it'll maybe look nothing like the final sheet metal object. Um, so this flat pattern in, in deciding, you know, your first cuts and your uh, how much material you actually need is going to be really, really useful. And it's something that that doesn't exist in, you know, normal Creo. Um, the, the, the second benefit here is going to be uh, bends, order tables, and uh, bend notes. Um, so going along with this flat pattern, when we're actually doing our drawings, uh, we can create bend order tables for our manufacturers. Again, this is going to be specific to sheet metal. It often depends um, which order you do your bends uh, to, to you know, determine what your final product is exactly going to look like. Um, so in your manufacturing, you often want to include a uh, bend order table. Uh, you know, include that information. And that's something that's going to be able to be done automatically in Creo Sheet Metal, uh, not so much in normal Creo. All right. Um, so uh, that's kind of a good overview of what Sheet Metal is, what it's used for, and what the benefits are. Um, so I'm going to move on a little bit to some specifics. Uh, so when we when we go into sheet metal mode in Creo, our ribbon, our top ribbon is going to change. So um, our features that uh, once existed like extrude and revolve, um, sweep and blend, these things that exist in normal Creo, these features are going to be mostly replaced by new features. Um, these new features will include things like planar wall, it will include uh, flat and flange walls, um, and then custom tools like bends and punches that exist, you know, solely in sheet metal. Um, so, so how I like to think of this is um, is uh, kind of as uh, kind of relate these features here to their comparable feature in Creo. Um, so in Creo. Uh, when you first create your very first thing, it's probably going to be an extrude or a evolve or a blend or a sweep. Um, when you're first making your base feature, you're probably not going to have a hole or a round. Those are going to be things that require something to already exist. But um, your base feature is probably going to be usually an extrude, but one of those four that I just said. Um, similarly, in sheet metal, you need to have a primary wall. So um, a primary wall is going to be a first wall that you create that you can build other secondary walls and uh, features into. Um, so the tools to make those primary walls, again, this kind of compares to extrude, revolve, blend, and sweep. But we have a planar wall, uh, extruded, revolved, blend, and offsets. So uh, these are going to be ways to create a primary wall. And this is going to be the first thing we do. Uh, from there, we can either create additional primary walls, um, or usually we're going to create secondary walls that uh, you know come off of this primary wall. So um, 
I'm going to show these features specifically, but the main ones are going to be flat and flange. Um, additionally, we can trim and extend existing walls, existing edges, et cetera. Uh, lastly, we can add features that are not walls. These can include bends, cuts, form punches, or patterns. Um, additionally, we can modify our corner relief. So essentially, this is how corners are handled between walls. OK. Um, now I'm just going to talk briefly about what's new in Creo 7 and 8. Um, so Creo 7 came out, uh, let me think, March 2020 or so, April 2020 maybe. And Creo 8 was uh, the same time in 2021. So that's, uh, I want to say, about eight months ago, maybe. Um, and then Creo 9 is going to be next spring. PTC in general is now doing a once a year uh, release cycle. So eight, as I said, is about um, eight months old. Nine will come out uh, in theory, late spring, summer, uh, you know, this coming year. Um, in general, I found uh, Creo 7 was a very big sizable upgrade to Creo in general. Um, in Creo 7, we have the very important multi-body design feature. Uh, multi-body design is something that people have wanted in Creo for a very long time. It's something that's been in SolidWorks for a very long time. Um, so Creo, uh, or PTC rather, got around to adding it in Creo 7. Um, essentially, multi-body design allows you to make multiple bodies in a single part file. Uh, these bodies can, um, can have different materials from each other. Um, an example might be a part of a flash drive. That flash drive is going to have plastic components and metal components all in the same part. Um, you could do this using multi-body. Um, another really important distinction here, we can actually have sheet metal bodies and non-sheet metal bodies in the same part file um, in Creo 7. So uh, previous to Creo 7, if you wanted, a, again, maybe a flash drive made of both sheet metal and plastic, you would actually have to make two different parts, one for the actual uh, you know, metal attachment part and one for the plastic body. In Creo 7, you can now do this all in the same part. So that's, that's pretty big um, as far as you know, actually adjusting your workflows, changing how you can do things. Uh, I think pretty major change. Um, additionally, with multi-body, you can um, add or subtract bodies from each other. So um, this is a little off topic from sheet metal, but um, one of the best uses of multi-body in general is modeling cavities, so interior cavities of something. You can actually create the cavity as a solid and then just subtract that solid from the greater whole uh, to create very accurate fluid cavities. Um, it's definitely the best way to do that. Um, additionally, in Creo 7, this is pretty minor, but we improved the uh, form features uh, and how these will generate. Um, if we look on the right, um, we can see the trim edges sheared form option. This is an option that's been added to Creo. Essentially, if your um, if your punch forms or um, any any type of forms intersect with an edge. Uh, we can see how this option just changes how, how that behavior, how that's behaved, whether uh, the resulting walls are straight up and down or if they, if they um, you know, match the material, match the amount of material, how it would, how it would be done. Um, and again, that's just a checkbox. You can enable that or disable that. Um, so moving on to Creo 8, we actually saw... Um, a few more really good upgrades to sheet metal in Creo 8. Um, in my mind, Creo 7 was the, the bigger upgrade, the better version. Um, and Creo 8 didn't do quite as much in most regards, nothing as big as multi-body in Creo 8. But um, we do have some 
pretty good sheet metal upgrades. Uh, the first is going to be create multiple flat walls at the same time. Um, previously, you could only do this with flange, um, you know, non-tangent entities. Uh, now you can do multiple flats at the same time. This can speed you up a lot if you find yourself making flat walls frequently. And it will actually automatically create um, miters for the three bend corner situations and corner reliefs for an inner and outer corners automatically. So um, it'll automatically handle your corners if you do create multiple flats. Um, can really speed you up, as I said, if you find yourself using flat walls frequently, which um, I assume a lot of people will if they find themselves using sheet metal frequently. Uh, pretty good upgrade there. Um, and the second improvement to Creo 8 is much faster regeneration. This is actually really, really huge. Um, I don't know what they did behind the scenes with like the math and the uh, you know the formulas with how Creo handles sheet metal, but somehow in Creo 8, sheet metal is regenerating something like 10 times faster. Um, so if you have any kind of large assemblies that you know you have high regeneration time with sheet metal specifically. Creo 8 somehow uh, substantially improved this, uh, this regeneration time. Um, so I, I, was, I think these are actually really good changes. Uh, I, I was surprised at you know, how much they put into this each year. Um, so yeah, um, pretty cool. I would recommend trying the, this stuff out if you, uh, if you have these versions available to you. So with all of that being said, I'm going to jump into Creo and show what this uh, sheet metal interface looks like. OK. Um, so here I have a pretty large assembly. And uh, this is going to be a snowmobile. And this actually contains sheet metal parts and non-sheet metal parts. So uh, we can see that you know some of this this body work is going to be sheet metal, and some of this other stuff is going to be various other uh, other materials. Um, whole lots of different parts here. Really pretty huge assembly. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open one single component from here. All right. And this is, um, if I go back to my, my snowmobile here, this component is, oops. Something in this area down here, I think, um, where I just selected. Um, some part of this spring suspension system, and uh, it's a it's a sheet metal it's a sheet metal part. So if we kind of zoom in here, we can see um, this white stuff is uh, is sheet metal. Um, this is actually a sub assembly itself. Um, I didn't notice. I think I actually uh, meant to open this part, but uh, these other components here are are not sheet metal. This one is. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open this sheet metal parts. And uh, first thing we're going to notice is our ribbon uh, is going to look a little bit different than how it usually does. Um, and that's actually because we're in this sheet metal tab here. Um, if I go to the model tab, We'll see our, uh, you know, our normal ribbon options. Um, we're actually going to do all of our sheet metaling work in this sheet metal tab. Um, so now, before I actually work on this sheet metal part right here and show some of these features, um, I'm actually going to show, uh, just do a little diversion to creating new sheet metal parts. Um, I'm going to go to part. So I just did file new. When I click part, we'll notice that we have solid and sheet metal. 
Um, so there's actually two ways to do this. Um, I can just select sheet metal right from the offset, click OK. And I'll jump right into sheet metal mode. We'll see that I have a, you know an empty new part and I'm, I'm in sheet metal right away. Um, the other option I have is I can actually make a new solid part. Um, and I can convert this uh, eventually to sheet metal. So um, really quick, sorry for all the clicking around. I'm just gonna do uh, file new sheet metal for now. And uh, we'll notice that a lot of this stuff is grayed out in the ribbon. Uh, I mentioned that the first thing we're going to need is our primary wall. Um, kind of like a general view, I guess, in a drawing, where um, it's the first kind of view you have to create. Um, actually, come to think of it, I think that's a really, really good, um, really good analogy. Um, in a drawing, you, can, you, you need to create at least one general view first. Um, then you can create pre projected or auxiliary views um, that kind of branch off from that initial general view, or you can create additional general views. Um, so that's that's a really good analogy for uh, primary secondary walls. I need to create a primary wall first. Um, from that point, I can either create another primary wall, or I can create secondary walls that that reference that primary wall. So uh, we'll notice that these are a little bit different, um, but if I click this drop down, we have some additional like sweep, swept blend, blend, rotational blend, revolve, um, and we have extrude. So uh, some of these might, again, be, be a bit familiar. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a planar wall. Um, this is really easy to set up. I'm just gonna draw this on a uh, specified plane. Um, I can really draw whatever I want. And I'll click OK. And uh, then I can just set my thickness. So uh, again, my, my sheet metal thickness, 0 0.045 units is fine with me. And I'll click OK. Um, so now that we have this primary wall created, we can see that all of our secondary wall options, um, or I'm sorry, these secondary wall options flatten flange. And additionally, all of these uh, additional feature options, such as extruded cut, form, rip, et cetera, bend, are uh, you know, lighting up. OK. Um, so now I'm going to just kind of elaborate on how to do solid into sheet metal. Um, so file new solid part, OK. Um, so if I have solid geometry already, um, I actually can convert this to sheet metal. Um, it's just a little bit of a different process. So I'm actually going to create an extrude here. Um, with a very small thickness. Something like this. OK. Um, so in this case, I did this. I'm doing this in you know the solid mode. And now I'm going to convert it to sheet metal. So to do this, I'm going to click this Operations dropdown right here. We see this Convert to Sheet Metal option. Um, you'll use this if you start in a solid part um, and you want to go to sheet metal after the fact. You can also use this if you're using multi-body. Maybe you create your non-sheet metal parts, um, and then you want to you know, start modeling in sheet metal. So I'm going to go to Convert to Sheet Metal. Um, and essentially, we have to set a primary wall. Um, that primary wall has to have a driving surface, so kind of like a top surface. Um, so uh, we're basically given the, uh, the tools to convert existing geometry into this primary wall and let us start working. Um, I could also do empty body if I just want to you know, jump right into to sheet metal with nothing. But in this case, um, I'm going to convert body one to sheet metal. I'm going to have to select a driving surface, so I'm just going to click this top surface. 
And when I click OK here, um, we'll now see that our uh, ribbon changes to sheet metal, first of all. And right away, we can perform all these other operations because we have a primary wall. We converted this uh, extrude one, created in solid geometry, and then we can see in the model tree um, that was converted to our first wall in sheet metal. All right. So now I'm going to jump back to uh, this existing sheet metal part. Um, now that we have that context for how to get started in sheet metal, how to get our first wall set up, um, I'm just going to use this existing model to, you know, kind of demonstrate some things. So uh, first, I'm going to talk about flat and flange. These are our two secondary wall tools, and these are going to create a wall that um, comes off of an existing wall. So uh, in this case, I'm going to select this edge right here. And uh, I'm going to create a secondary wall from this edge. And I'm going to show the difference between these flat and flange tools. So first, I'm going to go ahead and click flat. And we'll see what happens. Creo essentially creates a wall that comes off of this edge um, and lets me change a whole bunch of parameters here. So uh, I can change the height. I can change the angle of the bends. Um, additionally, if I just jump to bend position here, so this tab up in the ribbon, bend position. Um, now I'm just going to flip this over. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Um, just trying to get a better view here. Here we go. So uh, if I change this bend position, essentially just changes uh, how this is going to be dimensioned um, from that initial edge I selected. So we can see that edge here is basically the right side of our final wall versus um, here to the left side. This lets us set a certain dimension for the offset. Um, this as well. And um, this option essentially puts the uh, final distance in line with this initial uh, this initial edge. Um, so now getting into the difference between flat and flange, they're both going to look like this, um, you know, up until this point. But uh, the shape tab actually lets us customize this a bit. And the shape tab is going to be different for flat and flange. So if I go ahead and click sketch here, um, this, this is a flat. And I can actually use this shape tool to shape the side section or the cross section of my wall. So I'm just going to do some sketching. Let's make this kind of zigzag. No particular order. Maybe make it look like a crown. Why not? OK. Um, so now if we look in 3D, what's actually being generated? Um, we can see that uh, basically we are not only creating this wall, but uh, controlling how this, uh, this, this section is actually made via sketch. OK. Um, so now I'm going to do something similar over here. But this time I'm going to make a flange. All right, so once again, this will look similar right at the start. Kind of can click and drag this, change our angle, same deal. Um, same kind of deal with bend position as well. But if I go to the Shape tab here and click Sketch, oop, end of wall, Sketch, here we go. So um, in this case, I'm actually sketching this, is, this might be a bit confusing, but I'm actually sketching the side profile of the wall itself. So if I go into sketch view, um, I'm just going to do some sketching here. Once again, I'm just going to make this, you know, a bit, a bit zigzag. 
in no particular, no real particular order. I'm going to delete that previous segment. OK. Um, and we'll see what actually gets made uh, when I do that. So um, essentially, when we sketch this shape for flat and flange, we're controlling the, the orientation or the cross section from a different view. Um, in this flange, I'm looking at the side view. And in flat, I'm actually changing essentially this view. So we can see at this view, we're still a rectangle. Um, whereas if we did a flat, we would perform maybe cuts, you know, um, changing this cross section itself. Um, in the same way, if we go back to our flat over here. If we look this way, we're still a straight line. Whereas, uh, you know, with this flange tool, we're able to change this side profile. All right, cool. Um, so I hope that. Uh, makes a little bit of sense and sets some kind of light on these two secondary wall tools because um, I found this pretty confusing when I first started getting into this. Um, so next, I'm just going to show a uh, punch form. Um, so for this, we're actually going to uh, basically select a source model uh, of the actual uh, of the punch. Um, again, kind of modeling uh, how this behaves in the real world. Um, and we can see that kind of is just appearing here in purple. Um, so this is a, a preloaded model, but we could create our own as well to you know accurately model this punch and what's actually going to be happening. So um, I'm going to use coordinates. I'm just going to place this right here. Um, and we'll notice this is just like placing a linear hole. I can just click and drag these. Uh, these reference draggers in order to place this, or wherever I'd like, change these dimensions, click OK. And we'll see the punch is uh, included. Um, let's see, we have the extend tool. This will let us extend an existing wall. So if I click extend, click this edge. Kind of just click and drag this, extend it however far I would like. Pretty cool. Um, and then we have bend and bend back. So uh, we can see a bend here, existing edge. Um, oops, I actually didn't want to do this. I'm going to close out. But if I go ahead and click Bend, um, click this edge. Actually, that's a that's just a bad example. I'm sorry. Go ahead and bend this. This is giving me a little bit of trouble with this model um, just on these previously bent intersections. Um, so I'll actually hold off on showing that uh, for now. And uh, I'm just going to jump into flat pattern. So um, jumping back to my you know simpler creation here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and create a couple features here. So um, first of all, I'm just going to create multiple flats at the same time. Um, so this is new in Creo 8, but we can do this. But uh, if I just go ahead and uh, hold Control, select multiple edges. Um, we're actually creating the same the same flat here with the uh, the same options, just created four times. Um, this wasn't able to be done previously. Um, let's just change these dimensions back to make this a little bit more, you know, applicable. Change all these to zero. Uh, this might be something we actually want to do. Um, I'll go ahead and click OK. 
Um, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe extend this wall. Nope, not liking that. So uh, the flat pattern tool, it's going to be right here um, in my ribbon under bends or here in the uh, the graphics toolbar. So uh, we have flat pattern and flat pattern preview. Now, if I click this right here, it's going to give us this uh, little window. Um, if you work at multiple screens, there's uh, actually a config option to unlock this from our current window. So uh, if I go to config editor, go to finds, what? See if I can find this. Hmm. All right. Uh, after I'm done with this this demo, I'll be sure to you know quickly find this uh, to make sure I get this all to you. But there is a command um, configuration option. You could probably find it via Google too. That will uh, that'll unlock this window. Um, and that'll be very useful if you, as I said, are using multiple screens. You want to see what your flat uh, pattern is looking like as you're doing your modeling. All right. Um, I think that is about it as far as, uh, you know, introduction to sheet metal. Um, as I said, uh, we are going to have a sheet metal class, a two day class. Uh, so if you are interested in using this tool, uh, it's going to be taught by my colleague Bill at the end of this month. Um, so you can always reach out to us at Boundary um, if that interests you. Um, we can be reached at uh, the email on our screen for sales questions. Uh, and my email is on there as well. If you have any kind of uh, technical questions, um, just send me an email and we will make sure somebody is able to help you. Um, so I'm going to open it up to question and answer now. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to type them out into the go-to meeting or go-to webinar. Uh, question section. Uh, so I'll give everybody a couple minutes if they have any um, any sheet metaling questions. Um, and as I said, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, we can also uh, be reached, or I'm sorry, be found on YouTube. Um, so this webinar will likely be uploaded within a couple days. Um, additionally, we have years worth of webinars on our YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, again, just going into uh, Boundary Systems uh, YouTube, Boundary Systems YouTube on Google, you'll be able to find all those videos. Uh, so I have a question, and it is, uh, how do you set up the K factor? Um, so uh, I guess just a little uh, couple second uh, description of what that means. 
um, in case you don't know, it's just a uh, controls bend allowance of a sheet metal part through these um, basically various parameters. Uh, so how you're actually going to do this is through a um, is through a config setting. So let's see if I can just pull this up. Um, so these things I'm highlighting on my screen. Um, these are going to be two things found in Creo Configuration Editor. Uh, so we'll have to set the first one to K factor. So on um, this SMT part bend allow factor type, we'll set to K. Um, and then SMT part bend allowance factor, that will actually be where you put in the K factor. Um, so what you'll have to do is just go into Creo, go to our uh, config editor. Go to find, you know, type in that command or something similar. So let's see, it's SMT underscore part. See if I can find these. Huh. Maybe it's because we're not actually in sheet metal right now. So let's see if I go to the sheet metal part. Maybe that's what we got to do. So let's give this a try. Hmm. Sheet metal part. Parameters, aha, they're parameters. They're not config files, aha. So I was uh, misleading you on that, I'm sorry. So um, in this case, we're going to go to tools in the top ribbon and parameters. So if I expand this, Let's see, do we have to add them using sheet metal parameters? Aha, here we go. So it looks like by default, it's set up to be Y factor value set to be 0.5, but you would change those uh, through here. So by changing this from Y to K and changing this to uh, you know whatever value you'd like. Um, so sorry about uh, the, the second it took me to, to find that, but um, yeah, it's gonna be tools, parameters, um, and we're gonna change these two right here. Okay, I um, think that is all the questions we have today. Um, hope to see some of you uh, in a couple weeks for the sheet metal class. And again, as you all start using this, if you have any questions, um, always reach out and uh, we will help if we can. Uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of their Wednesday and great rest of the week. Uh, thanks again and uh, see you next time.